today, na sasa leo, we will take a very short time tutachukua muda mfupi sana and we will talk about the first stage of our spiritual development. Na tutaongea kuhusu hatua ya kwanza ya kukua kiroho. We said last time, tulisema wakati uliopita, we have three major stages in the growth uh, the spiritual growth. Kwamba tuna hatua tatu katika uh, ukuaji wa kiroho. There is infancy or baby step or baby stage. Kuna uh, uh, ile hatua ya kuwa mtoto. And then there is a childhood stage. Na kuna uh, ile hatua ya kuwa mtoto wa umri wakati. And then there is adulthood in the spiritual growth. Lakini pia kuna utu uzima katika ukuaji wa kiroho. So today we will start with the babyhood or infancy. Lakini leo tutaanza na ile hatua ya kwanza ya kuwa mtoto mchanga katika ukuaji wa kiroho. Now babyhood is a stage now uh, kuwa mtoto mchanga ni hatua which occurs immediately after birth ambayo inatokea mara tu baada ya kuzaliwa so when the baby is born kwa hiyo mtoto anapozaliwa the first two weeks are infancy ila zile wiki mbili ni, 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 ni za uchanga kabisa and then after that for two up to two years we call that babyhood na baada ya hapo kuna miaka miwili ambayo tunasema ni utoto lakini kwa Kiswahili ya hatuja hatujaweka namna hiyo now there are characteristics of these children when we look at them or na, these babies when we look at them na tukiwaangalia hawa watoto wana sifa za aina fulani now i want us to read some scriptures na nataka tusome maandiko kadhaa and then we will form a basis of what we are going to talk na ndipo tutakapo uh, kwenda kujenga msingi wa kitu ambacho tunaenda kuongelea we will start with first peter chapter 2 tutaanza na petro wa kwanza sura ya pili and we will read from verse 1 through verse 3 na tutasoma mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa tatu. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1 through verse 3. Uh, walaka wa kwanza wa Petro sura ya tatu kuanzia mwa mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa tatu. Uh, if you get it you can read it. Uh, waraka wa kwanza wa Petro sura ya pili mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa tatu. Biblia inasema basi wekeni mbali uovu wote na hila yote na unafiki na unafiki na husuda na masingizio yote. Kama watoto wachanga waliozaliwa uh, sasa yatamanini maziwa ya akili yasiogoshiwa ili kwa hayo mpate kuhukulia wokovu. Ikiwa mmeonja ya kwamba Bwana ni mwenye fadhili. Now Peter is writing a letter to the Christians who are scattered in Asia Minor. That's what we saw last time. Ah uh, Petro anaandika barua kwa wakristo waliotawanyika katika ile Asia ndogo kama tulivyoangalia wiki iliyopita. And he's telling them like new born babies. Na anawaambia kama watoto wachanga waliozaliwa crave for the milk of the word of God. Ili wayatamani maziwa ya neno la Mungu. Now here he went ahead and spoke the meaning of milk. Na aliendelea sasa na kuelezea maana ya yale maziwa. And he said the milk of the word of God that is not diluted or is not adulterated. Na akasema ni maziwa ya neno la Mungu yasiyogoshiwa. And if we look of our natural babies. Na tukiangalia watoto wa wachanga wa kimwili. They do nothing except sleeping 
and drinking their mother's milk. Hawafanyi kitu kingine chochote isipokuwa kulala na kunywa tu maziwa ya mama yao. How many of us have babies or have had the experience of having babies? Ni wangapi wetu ambao tuna watoto au tume kuwa na uzoefu wa kuwa na watoto? You know what happens once you have come from the hospital? Unajua kinachotokea unapotoka tu hospitali. The babies are very generous. They will leave you sleep for two or three days. Wale watoto ni wakarimu sana. Watakuacha ulale kwa siku mbili au tatu. And then after that, na baada ya hapo, every two hours they will be waking up and they want what? Kila baada ya masaa mawili wataamka na watataka nini? They will only want milk. Watataka tu maziwa. I still remember very vividly. Ninakumbuka vizuri kabisa. When we had our second born and our third born. Tulipokuwa na mtoto wetu wa pili na wa tatu. My wife was working in the hospital all night long. Mke wangu alikuwa anafanya kazi ya hospitalini usiku mzima. So I was the babysitter. Kwa hiyo mimi ndio niliyokuwa namtunza yule mtoto. And it was fun at night. Na ilikuwa ni ajabu usiku. And I used to teach at the university early in the morning classes. Na nilikuwa nafundisha asubuhi katika chuo kikuu yale madarasa ya mwanzoni. So all night long I will be giving a bottle of milk to the baby. Kwa hiyo usiku mzima nilikuwa nampa mtoto aile uh, uh, maziwa kwa kwa ile chupa and then in the morning my wife will come na asubuhi mke wangu anarejea and we will exchange duties na hapo tunabadilish tunabadilishana majukumu so i will go to work kwa hiyo sasa naenda kazini i remember one day nakumbuka siku moja I was teaching a class. Nilikuwa nafundisha darasa. And students looked at me. Na wanafunzi wakanitazama. And they asked me. Na wakaniuliza. Are you okay? Je, uko vizuri? And I said, why? Nikamwambia, kwa nini? Because my eyes were so red and inflamed. Kwa sababu macho yangu yalikuwa ni mekundu na yamevimba. I hadn't slept for like few days. Nilikuwa sijalala kwa siku kadhaa and I could not hide it anymore. Na ningeweza kuficha tena. With my small little eyes. Na macho yangu jinsi yalivyo madogo. They look like a Chinese eyes. Yanaona kama kama macho ya kichina. So they were all inside there. Kwa yote yalikuwa ndani humo. And you could not see my eyes. Na usingeweza kuona because I was very sleepy. Kwa sababu nilikuwa najisikia sana usingizi. Babies, we're talking about babies. Watoto wachanga, tunaongelea watoto wachanga. Peter says crave for milk like babies. Petro anasema yatamanini maziwa kama watoto wachanga. One main characteristic of babyhood in the spirit moja ya sifa ya kuwa mtoto mchanga katika ulimwengu wa roho we know what god has done tunajua kitu ambacho mungu au mambo ambayo mungu amefanya but we do not know god himself lakini hatumjui mungu mwenyewe we have knowledge based on experience tunakuwa na ufahamu ambao unatokana na uzoefu but we do not have knowledge based on the word of god lakini tunakuwa hatuna ufahamu ambao umejengwa kwenye neno la mungu many times people who are babies in the spirit mara nyingi watu ambao ni wachanga katika roho if you talk to them ukiongea nao they will tell you this watakwambia hivi what i know is this ninachokifahamu ni hiki i was a sinner mimi nilikuwa mwenye dhambi now i am born again na sasa nimeokoka that's all i know hicho ndilo ninachokifahamu tu because i am transformed i used to do that and that and that kwa sababu nimebadilika nilikuwa nafanya kile na kile na kile but now i don't do that anymore lakini sasa sifanyi hivyo tena i've experienced the power of god nimekutana na nguvu ya mungu and now i am here na sasa niko hapa that's all i know hicho ndicho ninachokijua tu If you start asking them deep theological issues or concepts, ukianza kuambia mambo ya theolojia ya ndani, they will tell you I don't know. Watakwambia mimi sijui and I don't even want to know. Now, wala sitaki kujua. Why? 
Kwa nini? I know one thing. Najua kitu kimoja. I was a sinner. Mimi nilikuwa mwenye dhambi. Now I am born again. Na sasa nimezaliwa mara ya pili. And I can feel it in my heart. Na ninaweza kuhisi hivyo ndani ya moyo wangu. All my sins are forgiven. Dhambi zangu zote zimesamehewa. I was blind. Nilikuwa kipofu. Now I can see. Na sasa ninaona. That's all they know. Hicho ndicho kitu wanachokifahamu tu. Let us read a little bit from the book of Psalms. Hebu tusome kidogo katika kitabu cha Zaburi. 103 and verse 7. Zaburi 103 mstari wa 7. Psalms 103 and verse 7. Zaburi 103 mstari wa 7. Psalms 103 and verse 7. Zaburi 103 mstari wa 7. Biblia inasema alimjulisha Musa njia zake wana wa Israeli matendo yake. Now it talks about the difference between Moses and the children of Israel. Hapa inaongelea tofauti iliyokuwepo kati ya Musa na wana wa Israeli. The Bible says God revealed his ways to Moses. Biblia inasema ya kwamba Mungu alifunua njia zake kwa Musa. But his deeds to the children of Israel. Lakini matendo yake aliadhihirisha kwa wana wa Israel. And we know the story of the journey in the desert. Na tunajua ile simulizi ya safari yao katika jangwa. How many times and what happened to these people? Ni mara ngapi na ni kitu gani kiliwatokea hawa watu? They only knew God based on what God did. Walimfahamu Mungu kulingana au kutokana na yale aliyoyafanya. But they didn't have the mind of God. Lakini walikuwa hawana ile nia au ufahamu wa Kimungu. They did not know the ways of God. Walikuwa hawazijui njia za Mungu. And many times that is a main characteristic of babyhood na mara nyingi hiyo ndio sifa ya kuwa mchanga kiroho many times a baby in the spirit mara nyingi mtoto mchanga katika roho they will tell you this watakwambia hivi i was so sick nilikuwa ni mgonjwa sana and people came here and they prayed for me na watu wakaja hapa na wakaniombea and i thank god i got healed na ninamshukuru mungu niliponywa so god did me a miracle kwa hiyo mungu alinitendea muujiza so one thing i know kwa hiyo kitu kimoja ninachokijua God can perform miracles. Mungu aweza kutenda miujiza. And God is present. Na Mungu yupo. And he hears prayer. Na anasikia maombi. And after that, na baada ya hapo, they don't know nothing. Hawajui chochote. Many times we've seen that. Mara nyingi tumeona hivyo. You talk to somebody. Unaongea na mtu fulani. And they will tell you I was demon possessed. Na anakuambia nilikuwa nina mapepo mengi. And they prayed for me. Na wakaniombea. And the demons went away. Na yale mapepo yakaondoka. But when you start asking them about the theology of forgiveness. Lakini ukianza kuongea nao kuhusiana na theolojia ya kusamehewa. And you ask them about the theology of eschatology. Na ukianza kuwauliza theolojia ya kujifunza neno la Mungu. Oh you ask them what is it what is it going to happen in the last days? Au kawauliza ni kitu gani kitatokea katika siku za mwisho? They will tell you I don't know. Watakwambia mimi sijui. What I know is one thing. Nachokijua ni kitu kimoja. I was sick. Nilikuwa mgonjwa. Now I am healed. Na sasa nimepona. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. If you read the book of John ukisoma kitabu cha Yohana chapter 9 sura ya 9 the whole of chapter 9 sura nzima ya ya, ya tisa. it's dedicated to a very interesting story na ni sura ambayo inaongelea simulizi ambayo ni ya kusisimua sana 
And I was reading that story myself again and again. Na nilikuwa nasoma hiyo simulizi tena na tena. And I laughed myself when I was reading that story. Na nikacheka nilipokuwa nasoma hiyo simulizi. Jesus and his disciples were walking. Yesu na wanafunzi wake walikuwa wanatembea. And they met this uh, poor blind guy. Na wakakutana na huyu jamaa ambaye alikuwa ni kipofu na maskini. And the disciples asked Jesus. Na wanafunzi wakamuuliza Yesu. Very interesting question. Na ni swali ambalo ni 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 la kusisimua sana. Who sinned? Is it him or the parents? Je, ni nani aliyetenda dhambi? Ni yeye au wazazi wake? So to them, kwa hiyo kwao, if you're having any disability, you are a sinner. Ukiwa na tatizo lolote la kimwili wewe ni mwenye dhambi. So Jesus looked at them. Kwa <laughs> Yesu akawatazama. And Jesus said nobody sinned. Na Yesu akasema hakuna aliyetenda dhambi. It's only that the glory of God is going to be shown to this person. Ni kwamba tu kwamba utukufu wa Mungu unaenda kudhihirishwa kwa huyu mtu. So we know the story Jesus healed that person. Tunajua hiyo simulizi na Yesu akamponya yule mtu. And this person met the Pharisees. Na huyu jamaa akakutana sasa na mafarisayo. And the, 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 the people started investigating him. Na watu wakaanza kuchunguza habari zake. And the Pharisees had a very interesting philosophy. Na mafarisayo walikuwa na filosofia ya ajabu sana. And they are telling this person now. Wanamwambia huyu jamaa sasa. Glorify God. Hebu mtukuze Mungu. The guy who healed you is a sinner. Yule jamaa aliyekuponya ni mwenye dhambi. And this guy said, I don't know. Na huyu jamaa akasema, mimi sijui. I just met this guy and he healed me. Mimi nimekutana tu na huyu jamaa na akaniponya. But the Pharisees say no. We 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 need to call your parents. Na mafarisayo wakasema hapana tunahitaji kuwaita wazazi wako. So they called the parents of this guy. Kwa wakawaita wazazi wa huyu jamaa. And they questioned them. Na wakawauliza. And this is what the parents said. Na hivi ndivyo wazazi walivyosema. We don't know much. Hatujui sana. What we know is one thing. Tunachokijua ni kitu kimoja. Our son was born blind. Mtoto wetu alizaliwa akiwa kipofu and we are the parents na sisi ni wazazi and we we have seen him now he is seeing very well na sasa tunamuona anaona vizuri kabisa what has happened to him we don't know kitu gani kimemtokea sisi hatujui and the pharisees were so angry na wale mafarisayo wakakasirika sana so they said it seems as if the parents are not of help na wakasema kwamba inaonekana wa wazazi hawawezi kutupa msaada. They called back the blind man who got healed. Wakamwita yule jamaa aliyeponywa tena. And they ask him. Na wakamuuliza. And question him. Na wakamhoji. And this guy said, "Do you want to be his disciple?" Na huyu jamaa akamwambia, "Je, mnataka kuwa mwanafunzi wao?" And they get they got so angry. Na wakachukia sana. And they say you were born a sinner. Na wakamwambia wewe ulizaliwa kipo mwenye dhambi. And now you want to lecture us about God? Na tata unataka utupe utupe maneno kuhusiana na Mungu? So this guy said a very nice statement which all babies say this statement. Na huyu jamaa akatoa tamko ambalo Uh, watoto wengi ambao ni wachanga wanatoa I was blind mimi nilikuwa um, nilikuwa kipofu but now I see lakini sasa ninaona and all these other theological things na mambo mengine yote haya ya kithiolojia I don't know mimi sijui so they kicked him out kwa hiyo wakamfukuza now I want us to learn one thing na nataka sasa tujifunze kitu kimoja. God does miracles and signs in our lives. Mungu anafanya miujiza na ishara katika maisha yetu in order to make us believe him. Ili sisi tuweze kumwamini. And once we believe him, 
using signs and miracles. Na tukishamwamini kupitia uh, ishala na miujiza, he wants us to grow and start walking with him. Anataka sasa tukue na tuanze kutembea pamoja na yeye. Many times we get hooked up and anchored on signs and miracles. Mara nyingi tunabaki tukishikilia mambo yanayohusiana na ishara na miujiza. You will see us running to places where there are miracles and signs. Na utaona tunakimbilia maeneo ambayo yana ishara na miujiza. We follow a miracle here. Tunafuata muujiza pale. If we are told there is a miracle somewhere else. Na tukiambiwa kuna muujiza mahali pengine. Oh there is an anointing somewhere else. Au kuna upako mahali fulani. We run there. Tunakimbia huko. We are chasing miracles. Tunafukuzia zile uh, ile miujiza. It is okay. God still does miracles ni sawa tu mungu bado anatenda miujiza but we are not anchored in miracles lakini sisi hatujajengwa hatuta, katika miujiza miracles are there to prove that god exists miujiza ipo kuthibitisha kwamba mungu yupo and those who don't believe in god na wale wasio muamini mungu God has a way to make you believe. Mungu ana njia ya kuwafanya waamini. He will perform a big miracle in your life. Atatenda muujiza mkubwa katika maisha yako. Oh, he will do a sign and a wonder. Au atafanya ishara na maajabu. That's why we pray for miracles. Ndio maana tunaomba kwa ajili ya miujiza. I believe in miracles. Ninaamini katika miujiza. I trust God for miracles. Na ninamwamini Mungu kwa habari ya miujiza. But my faith, lakini imani yangu is not anchored on miracles. Haijajengwa au misingi yake haiko kwenye miujiza. Babies in the spirit, babies wa, wa, in the spirit. Watoto wachanga katika roho, they will only have an anchor point or a reference point watakuwa tu na na kitu cha kuzungumzia that god did this miracle in my life kwamba mungu alifanya muujiza huu katika maisha yangu after that baada ya hapo that's the only thing they know hicho ni kitu pekee wanachokifahamu they don't take the opportunity to crave for the milk how hawataki kuchukua ile fursa ya kutamani maziwa and to grow in the word of god na kukua katika neno la mungu we need to grow in the word of god tunahitaji kukua katika neno la mungu we need to grow in the word of god tunahitaji kukua katika neno la mungu we need to know whom we have believed tunahitaji kujua ni nani tuliyemwamini if you look at the children of israel ukiangalia watoto wana wa israel god performed great things in their lives Mungu alitenda mambo makubwa katika maisha yao From when Moses showed up kuanzia kipindi ambacho Musa alitokea we see 10 big plagues Tunaona yale mapigo makubwa kumi. Big things that everybody said that it is God and it is not a natural phenomenon. Mambo makubwa ambayo watu walipoyatazama wakasema huyu ni Mungu na sio jambo la asilia. And then when we move on a little bit, na wangeenda mbele zaidi, God performed another big miracle that everybody stood in awe and said this is god mungu akatenda tena muujiza mpaka watu wakasimama kwa hofu wakasema huu huyu ni mungu because god parted the red sea kwa sababu mungu aligawanya bahari ya sham and all the enemies were flooded with the red sea na maadui wote wakachukuliwa na maji ya bahari ya sham and he still continued to show them that he is a mighty god na bado akaendelea kuwaonyesha kwamba yeye ni mungu mwenye nguvu and he continued to do big things day after day after day after day na akaendelea kufanya mambo makubwa siku baada ya siku baada ya siku in order 
to make sure they understand one thing first ili ahakikishe ya kwamba wanaelewa kitu kimoja kwanza that god is able kwamba mungu anaweza that is lesson number 1 everybody who is born of the spirit needs to know na hicho ni kitu cha kwanza ambacho yeyote aliyezaliwa katika roho anahitaji kuelewa that god is able kwamba mungu anaweza if we look at the positive characteristics of babyhood tukiangalia zile sifa nzuri za kuwa mtoto mchanga and i love that period of babyhood na ninapenda kila kipindi cha utoto uchanga because this is the time we are excited about god kwa sababu huu ni wakati ambao tunakuwa tumesisimka sana kuhusu Mungu because we know what has happened in our hearts kwa sababu tunajua kilichotokea ndani ya mioyo yetu we are enthusiastic and zealous to god na tuna ile shauku na kwa ajili ya Mungu wetu and we seek him and we pray and we read the word of god a lot na tunamtafuta Mungu tunaomba na tunasoma neno sana and this is the time you cannot fake it na huu ni wakati ambao huwezi ukajifanya kwamba uko hivyo because it comes deep from inside kwa sababu inatoka ndani kabisa ya moyo wako based on the experience we have with god kulingana na ule uzoefu tulionao na mungu wetu he has done something in my life amefanya kitu katika maisha yangu so we have a fresh experience of salvation kwa hiyo tunakuwa na uzoefu ule mpya kabisa wa wokovu we desire to learn about god na tunatamani kujifunza kwa habari za mungu wetu in our heart ndani ya mioyo yetu we love god so much tunampenda mungu sana i love to meet people who are recently born again nilipenda sana kukutana na watu ambao wameokoka hivi karibuni they love god so much wanampenda mungu sana and they don't care about anything na hawajali kuhusu kitu kingine chochote they are ready to die for jesus wako tayari kufa kwa ajili ya yesu they are ready to give everything for jesus wako tayari kutoa kila kitu kwa ajili ya yesu they become jesus fanatics wanakuwa ni mashabiki wakubwa wa yesu why kwa nini they have an experience wana uzoefu they got something which they didn't have before wana kitu ambacho hawakuwa nacho hapo awali that is babyhood and these are positive things about babyhood kwa hiyo huo ni utoto uchanga na ni kitu kizuri kuhusiana na utoto uchanga their main desire na shauku yao kubwa is to be in the presence of god all day long ni kuwepo katika uwepo wa Mungu siku nzima That is good but also there is life which is waiting for us. Hilo ni jema lakini pia yapo maisha yanayotusubiri. When God saves us, Mungu anapotuokoa. He does not take us away from the world. Huwa hatutoi katika ulimwengu. Jesus said that Yesu alisema I don't pray that you take them away from the world. Kwamba baba siombi kwamba uwaondoe ulimwenguni. But I'm praying that you will protect them from the evil one. Lakini naomba kwamba ukawalinde na yule mwovu. So it is God's plan. Kwa hiyo ni mpango wa Mungu that we will be saved. Kwamba tutaokoka and we will remain here on earth na tutabaki hapa duniani and we will learn to walk with god in all circumstances of our life na tutajifunza kutembea na mungu katika mambo yote ya maisha yetu what are the few negative things about the characteristics of babyhood na nini kitu ambacho sio kizuri kuhusiana na sifa za kuwa mtoto mchanga as babies in the spirit kama watoto wachanga katika ulimwengu wa roho our mind is not yet renewed by the word of god ania zetu bado zinakuwa hazijafanywa upya na neno la mungu if we read romans chapter 
Ukisoma wa Rumi sura ya 12 and verse number 2 Na mstari ule wa pili Romans chapter 12 wa Rumi sura ya 12 and we will read verse number 2 Na tutasoma mstari wa pili Wala msifuatishe namna ya dunia hii bali mgeuzwe kwa kufanywa upya nia zenu mpate kujua hakika mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo mema ya kumpendeza na ukamilifu in other words, he's trying to tell us we should have a new way of thinking. Once we are born again, our spirits are transformed. But our mind is still programmed by the world. So we need to start taking steps now. Na sasa tunahitaji kuanza kuchukua hatua to renew our mind. Kufanya upya nia zetu. And it is the word of God. Na ni neno la Mungu which changes the way we think. Ambalo linabadilisha jinsi tunavyofikiria. Now we start thinking like Jesus. Na sasa tunaanza kufikiria kama Yesu. We start walking like Jesus. Tunaanza kutembea kama Yesu. We start asking questions that make us servants and Jesus becomes the master. Tunaanza kuuliza maswali ambayo yanatufanya sisi tuwe watumishi na Yesu kuwa bwana wetu. Now if you look in the book of Galatians, na sasa ukiangalia katika kitabu uh, cha Wagalatia, it talks about the predominance of flesh. In, uh, inaongelea kuhusiana na kutawala kwa mwili. Now, if we do not walk in the spirit, na sasa tusipotembea katika roho, this is what Galatians says, hivi ndivyo uh, Wagalatia inasema, we will be we will be vulnerable to gratify the desires of flesh tutakuwa katika hatari ya kutimiza matakwa ya mwili so spiritual man and carnal mind na sasa uh, mtu wa kiroho na, uh, na, 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 na na mtu wa kimwili if you look the way they behave ukiangalia wanavyo uh, tabia, you can easily tell who is led by the spirit and who is led by the flesh. Utaweza kutambua ni nani anaongozwa na mwili na ni nani anaongozwa na roho. Let us read Galatians 5. Hebu tusome wa Galatia 5 verse 16 mstari wa 16 through 24. Mpaka 20 Galatians chapter 5 Wagalatia sura ya 5 verse 16 mstari wa 16 all the way to 24 mpaka wa 24 it talks about the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit hapo inaongelea tunda la roho na tunda la mwili if we are spiritual kama Sisi ni wakiroho and we are led by the spirit of God. Na tunaongozwa na roho wa Bwana. And we allow the word of God to transform us. Na tukaruhusu neno la Mungu litubadilishe. There are certain fruit which is going to manifest in our lives. Kuna matunda ambayo yataenda kudhihirishwa katika maisha yetu. And that is what is called maturity. Na hiyo ndio inayoitwa kukomaa kiroho. You will read to some. Basi nasema enendeni kwa roho wala hamtazitimiza kamwe tamaa za mwili. Kwa sababu mwili hutamani ukishindana na roho na roho kushindana na mwili. Kwa maana hizi zimepingana hata mwezi kufanya mnayotaka. Lakini mkiongozwa na roho hampo chini ya sheria. Basi matendo ya mwili ni dhahiri. Ndio haya, uasherati uchafu ufisadi ibada ya sanamu uchawi uadui ugombi wivu hasira fitina faraka uzushi usuda ulevi ulafi na mambo yanayofanana na hayo katika hayo nawaambia mapema kama 
nilivyokwisha kuambia ya kwamba watu watendao mambo ya jinsi hiyo hawata urithi ufalme wa Mungu lakini tunda la roho ni upendo furaha amani uvumilivu utu wema fadhili uaminifu upole kiasi juu ya mambo kama hayo hakuna sheria na hao walio wa Kristo Yesu wameusulubisha mwili pamoja na matendo yake mabaya na tamaa zake it is quite a number of things ni mambo mengi but if i summarize it to us lakini nikiongea kwa mutasari kwa ajili yetu if we allow god to help us to grow in the spirit tukimruhusu mungu atusaidie kukua katika roho the things of the flesh mambo ya mwili will not have predominance over our life hayatatawala juu ya maisha yetu and to do the things of the spirit na kufanya mambo ya kiroho we won't struggle that much hatutahangaika sana because if we are not led by the holy spirit kwa sababu kama hatuongozwi na roho mtakatifu it becomes very difficult inakuwa ni vigumu sana to do what jesus tells us to do kufanya yale ambayo yesu anatuambia tufanye it is sometimes next to impossible na wakati mwingine ni karibu na kusema haiwezekani kabisa without the holy spirit bila roho mtakatifu without the help of god bila msaada wa mungu without the power of the word of god bila nguvu ya neno la mungu you cannot please god huwezi kumpendeza mungu because there are times when it is natural to revenge kwa sababu wakati mwingine inakuwa ni kitu cha asilia kulipiza kisasi because this person has done something so bad to us kwa sababu huyu mtu amekutendea kitu ambacho ni kibaya sana and it is obvious what he has done na kitu alichokifanya kiko wazi kabisa so we are confronted before us with two things kwa hiyo mbele yetu tunakabiliwa na mambo mawili the body or the flesh says revenge mwili unasema hebu lipiza kisasi but the spirit says forgive lakini roho anasema samehe now i have seen so many times na sasa nimeona mara nyingi people who are born again christians watu ambao ni wa kristo waliowakoka they will shorten their sleeves watavuta mikono ya shati lao au nguo yao and they will make a big fist na wanatengeneza ngumi kubwa and they will flex their muscles na watavuta watatunisha misuli yao and they gonna knock you down so big na wataku Oh, kupiga sana and then they will continue going to church <laughs> na wataendelea kwenda kanisani why kwa nini they will say the flesh arose in me <laughs> wanasema mwili uliinuka ndani yangu <laughs> or oh, sometimes we have seen na wakati mwingine tumeona a born again christian kristo aliyeokoka and they will talk so filthy of a language watatamka maneno mabaya because they are so angry kwa sababu wamepatwa na hasira kubwa because probably the 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 dala dala conductor did something wrong to them labda inawezekana kwa sababu conductor wa dala dala amefanya kitu kwa ajili yao and then later on they come back to their senses na baadaye wakarudi katika fahamu zao and we are confronted with these opportunities daily na hizi fursa ziko mbele yetu kila siku should we hate or should we love je tuchukie au tupende should we have peace or should we fight je tunatakiwa tuwe na amani au mapigano this morning i came a little bit late 
Because I had an opportunity to fight somebody. Somebody came to me and he started talking to me with a very filthy language. He said, you have packed on my parking space. And the whole night your car has been here. And he was leaning on my window. And when I looked at him, I started sizing him. Sizing him. If if I throw a big ball, blow here. <laughs> My blow and his blow, which one is stronger? <laughs> and I looked at him and he was continuing to lang on me. So I put that big, you know, face, the, the crossed face on my face. <laughs> To show him that I can fight too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was ready to take off my, my, my coat. <laughs> and he was from India. <laughs> so I had an opportunity. You want to know what happened? <laughs> God gave me wisdom. So I had to talk to him. And I talked to him. And I talked to him. Again. But he was so furious. But at the end of 20 minutes, we were shaking hands and we were laughing. And he said, come to my house. You are invited. And I told him, that's where I stay. I stay somewhere there. You are also invited. And we were laughing. And I thanked God I didn't fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your prayers. <laughs> because I was ready. <laughs> because this guy was ready to attack me. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. He reminded me you have to opt peace and not fighting. So when he was talking very insultive words, in my spirit, I was just praying and saying, God, give me wisdom. And then at the end, I thank God. He settled down. And then we started making sense. And then we all started laughing. Now I know next time I invite him to church, probably he will come. <laughs> there are two challenges of babyhood. The first challenge of babyhood is innocence. And the second challenge is vulnerability. Now let us quickly look at this and then we will pray. Innocence. Babies, whatsoever you give to them, they will eat. Watakula. Or they will drink. Au watakunywa. They trust their mother a hundred percent. Wanamuamini mama yao asilimia mia. This is a characteristic of babies. Hii ni sifa ya watoto wachanga. That's why new mothers nando mana wabamo alio za hivikaribuni have to be trained on what to give to their babies. 
lazima wafundishwe ni kitu gani wanatakiwa wawape watoto wao otherwise vinginevyo they will either overfeed them watawalisha kupita kiasi and the kids are gonna the babies are gonna be obese na watoto watakuwa na utapio utapia mlo uliozidi or they will underfeed them au wata wa, wa, watawapa chakula ambacho hakitoshi and they're going to be malnourished na watakuwa na ugonjwa wa utapia mlo now babies normally will eat whatever is given to them mara nyingi watoto wachanga watakula chochote wanachopewa from anybody kutoka kwa mtu yoyote anybody who preaches yeyote anayehubiri to a baby that person is the man of god kwa mtoto mchanga huyo ni mtu wa Mungu and whatsoever they collect somewhere there in the books or in the internet or in the preaching na chochote wanachokusanya huko kutoka kwenye maubiri au kutoka kwenye mitandao to them is a good food kwao ni chakula kizuri why kwa nini they are innocent hawana hatia they don't know better hawajui zaidi they can easily be deceived wanaweza wakadanganywa kirahisi Now I saw a video clip one time Siku moja niliona kipande cha video about I think it was uh, Ngorongoro National Park Nafikiri ilikuwa ni inahusu hifadhi uh, uh, ya wanyama ya Ngorongoro There was a baby or a calf wildebeest kwa kulikuwa na mtoto mdogo wa mnyama yule sio anaitwaje nyumbu so this baby calf wilderness i mean wildebeest kwa hiyo huyu mtoto wa nyumbu wandered around and got lost alianza kutembea tembea na akapotea and he bumped on a suckling lioness na akajikuta anakutana na simba anayenyonyesha so the baby wilderness kwa hiyo huyu mtoto wa nyumbu thought that this is the mother akafikiri kwamba huyu ni mama yake so when the cubs for the lion were suckling their mother kwa hiyo watoto wa simba walipokuwa wananyonya kutoka kwa mama yao the baby calf also was sucking to the same mother huyu mtoto wa nyumbu naye akawa ananyonya kutoka kwa huyo huyo mama I don't know if you saw that clip Sijui kama uliona hicho kipande cha video Very interesting Ni kitu ambacho ni cha kushangaza sana When I saw that nilipoona hivyo something came into my heart Kitu fulani kikaingia moyoni mwangu That is how we are Kwamba hivyo ndivyo tulivyo When we are babies in the spirit tunapokuwa watoto wachanga katika roho we are so innocent tunakuwa ni watu wasio na hatia kabisa we don't know where to suckle where to get our milk hatujui ni mahali gani tukanyonye ni mahali gani tukapate maziwa any preacher who preaches the word of god muhubiri yoyote anayehubiri neno la mungu we sit there and we listen to them tunakaa pale na tunawasikiliza and we write a lot of notes na tunaandika notes nyingi. I remember myself. Na mimi nakumbuka mwenyewe. One time. W- w- wakati gani? One time. W- wakati mmoja. When I was like a year or less than a year in Christ. Nilipokuwa nimeokoka nina mwaka mmoja au uh, kabla ya mwaka mmoja. I was reading this this books. Nikawa nasoma hivi vitabu. And then I went to my friend. Na ndipo nikaenda kwa rafiki yangu. And I told my friend. Nikamwambia rafiki yangu. I think I have a revelation. Nafikiri nao ufunuo. If you are born again, kama umeokoka, you are not supposed to die. Hutakiwi kufa. And my friend looked at me. Na rafiki yangu akanitazama. And he said, "What?" Akasema, "Nini?" And I started giving him scripture after scripture after scripture. Na nikaanza kumpa andiko baada ya andiko baada ya andiko. Because I got a new revelation. Kwa sababu nilipata ufunuo mpya that if you are born again, kwamba kama umeokoka, you don't die. Hutakiwi kufa. And my friend was puzzled. Na rafiki yangu akashangazwa. He said, "Lucas, where did you get this?" Akasema, "Look 
kazi umepata wapi hii? And he started taking me through all the scriptures which tell me about going to heaven. Na kaanza sasa kunipitisha kwenye maandiko ambayo yakaniambia kwamba tunaenda mbinguni. And he asked me, where is Apostle Paul? Na kaniuliza, mtume Paulo yuko wapi? And I told him, nikamwambia, you are picking weak characters in the Bible. Wewe unachukua wale waandishi katika Biblia ambao ni nini ambao ni dhaifu. Why don't you talk about Elijah? Kwa nini usichukue watu kama Elia? Elijah was taken to heaven by the chariot of fire. Elia alichukuliwa kwenda mbinguni kwa magari ya moto. Talk about Enoch. Hebu ongelea habari za Enoch. The Bible says Enoch was translated to heaven. He Bib- didn't die. Biblia inasema uh, Enoch alihamishwa kwenda mbinguni na hakufa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does it sound spiritual? Je, inaonekana ni ya kiroho? Yes, it is a spiritual. Dio, ni ya kiroho. Like, but there is a what? There is a twisted truth in it. Lakini ndani yake kuna ukweli ambao umepindishwa. And for many babies in the spirit. Na kwa watoto wengi wachanga katika roho. They can easily be deceived wanaweza wakadanganywa kirahisi until when after six months or one year or so na uh, mpaka ilipofika muda wa miezi sita wa mwaka mmoja my friend continue to pray for me and challenge me every day yule rafiki yangu akaendelea kunifundisha na kunika na kunipa changamoto kila siku then i realized that i did not believe the right thing ndipo nilipogundua ya kwamba sikuamini kitu kilicho sahihi and all these bogus books i threw them away na hivi vitabu vyote ambavyo havieleweki nikavitupa babyhood is characterized by innocence ile hali ya kuwa mtoto mchanga huwa inakuwa na sifa ya kutokuwa na hatia The knowledge is not rooted in the word of God. Na ufahamu haupo katika msingi wa neno la Mungu. It is rooted in the experience or it is rooted on what God has done. Kwa uzoefu unakuwa umejengwa kwenye msingi wa uzoefu au wa mambo ambayo Mungu ametenda. I attended one fellowship one time. Wakati fulani nilitembelea ibada moja. These people were very spiritual. Hawa watu walikuwa ni wa kiroho sana. When I got there, nilipofika huko, they started giving testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. Wakaanza kutoa shuhuda baada ya shuhuda na baada ya shuhuda. And after every testimony they were singing. Na kila baada ya shuhuda walikuwa wanaimba. And I was there waiting for the word of God. Na mimi nilikuwa niko pale na subiri neno la Mungu. So, so I thought after this testimony we're going to hear the word of God. Nilifikiri kwamba baada ya hizi shuhuda tutaenda kusikia neno la Mungu. Probably after this testimony a preacher is going to stand and we are going to learn the word of God. Labda baada ya ushuhuda huu kuna muhubiri atasimama na tutaenda kujifunza neno la Mungu. One hour passed. Saa moja ikapita. And they were asking anybody else with a testimony. Na wakawa nauliza mtu mwingine yoyote mwenye ushuhuda. And another person with a testimony. Mtu yote mwingine mwenye ushuhuda. Do we have another mother here with a testimony? Tunaye mzee mwingine hapa ana ushuhuda. Another old man with a testimony here. Na mama mwingine mzee ana ushuhuda hapa. So we stayed there and all we got was testimony. Kwa hiyo tulikaa pale na mambo yote tulikuwa tunasikia ni ushuhuda tu. It was good, it was not bad. Ilikuwa ni nzuri wala haikuwa mbaya. And our faith was lifted up. Na imani zetu zikainuliwa. But what about Wednesday when we we got there again? Eh, uh, na vipi kuhusu Jumatano tulipofika tena pale? It was testimony again. Ilikuwa ni shuhuda tena. And testimony. Na shuhuda. And another testimony. Shuhuda nyingi. And another testimony. Shuhuda nyingi. So their entire faith kwa hiyo imani yote 
It's anchored and rooted on testimonies. Ime jengwa na kuwa na mizizi yake katika shuhuda. What's wrong with that? Je, kuna ubaya katika hilo? It means it, it means inamaanisha these people are anchored on what God can do. Hawa watu wamejengwa katika vitu ambavyo Mungu anaweza kufanya. But they are not anchored on who God is. Lakini hawajajengwa kutokana na jinsi Mungu alivyo. These are two different things. Haya ni mambo mawili tofauti. If you go quickly, you will think that they are one and the same. Ukienda haraka utafikiri kwamba yote ni sawa. There are those who know God by what God has done. Kuna wale ambao wanamfahamu Mungu kwa yale aliyoyatenda. And there are those who actually no god for who he is lakini wapo wengine wanaomjua mungu kwa jinsi alivyo and my prayer to us na maombi yetu kwa ajili yetu is that god will help us kwamba mungu akatusaidie that we know him better ili tumfahamu yeye zaidi and the power which raised jesus from the death na ile nguvu iliyomfufua yesu kutoka kwa wafu but That's not all. Lakini hiyo haitoshi. The mind that was in Christ Jesus. Ile nia iliyokuwemo ndani ya Kristo Yesu. That when we walk here on planet earth. Kwamba tunatupotembea katika dunia hii, we will represent the kingdom of heaven. Tutawakilisha ufalme wa mbinguni. In what we say, kwa yale tunayosema and how we think na jinsi tunavyofikiria and how we do things na jinsi tunavyofanya vitu the second the second challenge we have in babyhood changamoto ya pili tulionao katika maisha katika ile hatua ya kuwa mtoto mchanga before i even go there let me give some nuggets here kabla sijaenda okay ngoja niwape vitu vingine hapa because babies are innocent how do we how do we overcome that kwa sababu watoto wachanga wanakuwa hawana hitia hatia je tunawezaje kushinda hilo first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21 wa thessaloniko wa kwanza sura ya kwanza chapter 5 wa thessaloniko wa kwanza sura ya 5 and verse 21 na mstari wa 21 First Thessalonians wa Thessalonike wa kwanza chapter 5 sura ya 5 and verse 21 mstari wa 21 and i still remember na bado ninakumbuka this was my father's favorite scripture ili andiko lilikuwa ni andiko alilokuwa analipenda sana baba yangu since when we were young tangia tulipokuwa watoto wadogo He used to hit that so hard on us. Alikuwa anatufundisha kwa nguvu sana hilo andiko. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21. Wa Thessalonike wa kwanza sura ya 5 mstari wa 21. Biblia inasema Jaribuni mambo yote. Lishike lishikeni uh, lililo jema. Amen. Can do it again. Jaribuni mambo yote lishikeni lililo jema. Test everything. Jaribu mambo yote. Other translation says prove everything. Na maandiko uh, Biblia zingine zinasema uh, thibitisha kila kitu. You know we servants of God. Unajua sisi watumishi wa Mungu of 21st century wakizazi wa karne ya 21 if you question what i teach uki uh, ukiwa na wasiwasi kuhusiana na kitu ninachokufundisha and you come to me na ukaja kwangu and you say lucas na ukasema lucas you taught this in church ulifundisha hili kanisani and i don't agree with you na mimi sikubaliani na wewe you know what i'm going to tell you unajua nitakwambia kitu gani Don't point a finger on the anointed one of God. Usimnyoshe kidole mpaka mafuta wa Bwana. When I speak, 
I speak under the anointing of God. You don't have a right to question whatsoever I say. Una haki ya kuwa na wasiwasi na kitu chochote ninachosema. Because I am under the influence and the anointing of God. Kwa sababu niko chini ya uongozi na upako wa Mungu. That is what us preachers say. Hivyo ndivyo sisi waubiri tunavyosemaga. But the Bible says here lakini Biblia inasema hapa prove everything thibitisha kila kitu test everything jaribu kila kitu and hold fast lakini rishike what is right lililo jema and i want you to take this home na nataka uchukue iwe ndio nayo nyumbani it is a fight for your soul ni kwa ajili ya kupigania nafsi yako nobody is going to fight for your soul hakuna atakayepigania nafsi yako we live in a generation whereby information is everywhere tunaishi katika kizazi ambacho taarifa ziko kila mahali you can get garbage out there unaweza ukapata vitu vya ajabu huko nje you need to learn unahitaji kujifunza to know how to prove everything namna ya kuthibitisha kila kitu and if it is right na kama liko sahihi then hold it basi lichukue don't be like a baby wildebeest usiwe kama yule mtoto wa nyumbu you are going to suckle from a lioness unaenda uh, kupata maziwa kutoka kwa simba yes you will get the milk ndio utapata maziwa but in the evening in the evening lakini jioni you will turn to become dinner for the lion and his cubs and her cubs utabadilika na kuwa chakula cha simba now and that is what is happening today na hicho ndicho kinachotokea leo people are giving milk everywhere watu wanapata maziwa kutoka kila sehemu and we don't question where we get our milk na tujiulizi ni mahali gani tunapopata maziwa yetu so we are suckling from a lion mother kwa hiyo tunanyonya kutoka kwa 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 mama wa simba and we come home celebrating and we are excited na tunarudi nyumbani uh, tunasherekea na kusisimka today we were taught about miracles Ye, leo tulijifunza habari za miujiza and miracles can happen like popcorn everywhere na miujiza inaweza ikatokea kama bisi kila mahali and there are seven steps to get your miracle na kuna hatua saba za kupata muujiza wako there are four different whatever to get your miracle kuna namna nne ya kupata sijui muujiza wako we are suckling from a mother lion tunanyonya kutoka kwa simba mama be careful uwe makini you never know huwezi kujua when the mother lion is hungry wakati ambapo yule simba mama atakapokuwa na njaa you will turn to become a lunch utabadilika kuwa chakula cha mchana how to overcome innocence namna gani tunaanza kushinda kukuta kuwa na hatia Second Timothy chapter 2 Timotheo wa pili sula ya pili Second Timothy chapter 2 Timotheo wa pili sula ya pili and verse 15 Na mstari wa 15 How to overcome innocence as a baby Jinsi ya kushinda uh, ile hali ya kutokuwa na hatia kama mtoto mchanga Biblia inasema Jitahidi kujionyesha kuwa umekubaliwa na Mungu. Mtenda kazi asiye asie na sababu ya kutahayari. Ukitumia kwa halali neno la kweli. The Bible English translation says this. Biblia uh, kutoka kwenye uh, kiingereza aliyotumia inasema hivi. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Soma au jifunze kujionyesha kwamba umekubalika mbele za Mungu. So it is okay to have received a miracle from God. Kwa hiyo ni sawa kupokea muujiza kutoka kwa Mungu. But now, lakini sasa as we continue forward, tunaposendelea mbele, we need to study the word of God. Tunahitaji kusoma neno la Mungu. We need to eat and drink 
from the table of Jesus. There are times you want to read the word of God. That's when a friend, 15 years old, I mean you have lost each other for 15 years. Calls you at that time that you want to read the word of God. And then we start testimonies and testimonies and testimonies and testimonies. Until when it is time to go to bed. <laughs> then we go to bed, we don't read. <laughs> and tomorrow, <laughs> when you are ready to read the word of God, guess what happens? That's when you remember that you are so tired. And you are there and all the eyes are just giving up. The devil will use everything to make sure you do not read and study the word of God. I remember one time I sat down I said today I gotta read the word of God. Then I turned off everything, all gadgets. I turned them off. And then I was there with my Bible. And then every time I study, my mind is somewhere, somewhere there. Now I'm thinking about this. And then I'm thinking about onions somewhere else. And then I'm thinking about my car. And then I'm thinking about this person. And I'm there, I'm reading a chapter. But I'm not understanding anything. Something is just distracting me. How many people are like me? <laughs> I want to help you this morning. <laughs> God helped me. And you'll find yourself spending a lot of time, but you're not understanding anything. The secret, Siri. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians you'll go find it but I'll paraphrase the scripture. God has given us the power to pull down everything that raises itself. Any understanding that raises itself against the knowledge of God. Against the knowledge of God. So I learned before you read the word of God you sit there and you say mind I want you to focus on the word of God. And we are subjecting our mind into the mind of Jesus. When you remember something, bring it back. Bring the mind back. You say it is the Bible and the Bible only. Because the devil will use your mind. So focus. And give God all the control of your mind. And you will be surprised. The mind is subject to the word of God. If you don't tame your mind, your mind will be wandering around. Everywhere. Kila mahali. Everywhere. Kila mahali. The time to read the word of God. That's when you remember the movie you saw two weeks ago. And so many other things 
they will be coming into your mind. Remember, God has given us power over our minds. Vulnerability. Second thing, second challenge is vulnerability. Vulnerability is ability to easily be harmed or destroyed. Kuwa katika hali ya hatari ni namna ya ambayo unaweza ukaangamizwa au kuharibiwa kirahisi. Babies cannot protect themselves. Watoto wachanga hawawezi kujilinda wenyewe. They cannot fight for themselves. Hawawezi kupigana wao wenyewe. And they cannot defend themselves. Na hawawezi kujihami wao wenyewe. To destroy the destiny Kwa, to destroy the destiny the enemy is going to attack those who are most vulnerable. Kwa jili ya kuharibu mwisho wao au mstakabali wa maisha yao, adui atawashambulia wale ambao wako hatarini. Every time, kila wakati, if the devil wants to attack he will look for those who are mostly vulnerable. Atatafuta wale ambao wako hatarini zaidi. Every time there is a great destiny, wakati wakati wote kunapokuwa na mstakabali mkubwa wa maisha. If there is a destiny which is to be born in your life, kama kuna kitu ambacho baadaye kinatakiwa kizaliwe katika maisha yako oh there is a destiny to be born in a nation au kuna hali uh, fulani ya kuzaliwa katika taifa or even in the world hata katika ulimwenguni look at the characteristic of the devil hebu angalia sifa za shetani it is to slaughter the babies ni kwa ajili ya uh, kuua watoto now we get two examples from the Bible. Tuna mifano miwili kutoka kwenye Biblia. When Moses was born, Musa alipozaliwa, Moses carried the destiny of the children of Israel. Musa alikuwa amebeba mstakabali wa wana wa Israel. Not only that, na sio hivyo tu, Moses was very monumental in establishing the nation of Israel. Uh, Musa pia alikuwa ni wa muhimu sana katika kujenga taifa la Israeli because God has sent Moses as a deliverer kwa sababu Mungu alimtuma Musa kama mkombozi look what the devil did angalia kitu ambacho shetani alifanya pharaoh ordered all the children to be slaughtered uh, farao akamrisha watoto wote wachanga wachinjwe Every time there is destiny wakati wote kunapokuwa na kitu kikubwa au mstakabali mzuri the enemy goes for the vulnerable adui anawafuata walio hatarini Moses is very fundamental in our judeo christian faith na Musa ni mtu wa msingi sana katika imani yetu ya Kikristo the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. Vitabu vya kwanza vitano katika Biblia viliandikwa na Musa. Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus and Judges. Mwanzo kutoka kumbukumbu ya Tolati, Walawi na Waamuzi. All these five books introduced us to who God is. Hivi vitabu vyote vitano vilitutambulisha kwamba Mungu ni nani and the devil was after the destiny na shetani alikuwa anatafuta huo mustakabali when herod when we talk about the christmas story na tukiongea habari za christmas simulizi ya christmas herod was told by the wise men that the king of the jews is born Eh hey, Rode aliambiwa na wale mama juice kwamba kuna mfalme amezaliwa. We get instruction from the angel of God. Tunapata uh, maelekezo kutoka kwa malaika wa Mungu. Joseph is told take the baby 
to Egypt because Herod wants to kill the baby. Yusuf anaambia kwamba mchukue mtoto mpeleke Misri kwa sababu Herod anatafuta kumuua. Now we are seeing here that every time there is destiny na tumeona hapa wakati wote kunapokuwa na kitu kikubwa kinachoenda kufanyika the devil will always fight that destiny before it is born shetani atapigana vita uh, na huo mstakabali kabla haujazaliwa and if that destiny is born na kama mstakabali umeshazaliwa the devil will always want to kill that destiny when it is vulnerable wakati wote shetani atatafuta kuua huo mstakabali unapokuwa hatarini any great idea or great vision na unapokuwa na wazo lolote kubwa au maono makubwa the most vulnerable time it's the time of inception of that idea na wakati wa hatari zaidi ni wakati ambapo unatunga lile wazo or when that inception when that idea is just being birthed au wakati ambapo hilo uh, wazo limezaliwa tu and that is the time the idea and the vision and the dream you have na ndipo ambapo uh, lile wazo pamoja na maono na pamoja na ndoto ulizo nazo it's very vulnerable zinakuwa ziko hatarini sana it is in its babyhood stage kwa sababu ziko katika hali ya uchanga and that is when the devil wants to kill it na ndio wakati ambao shetani anataka auwe now i know here right now na ninajua hapa wakati huu god has given some of you here mungu amewapa kati yenu wengine hapa so big of a destiny in your heart umustakabali mkubwa sana ndani ya moyo wako god has given you a vision to do something big mungu amekupa maono kufanya kitu kikubwa in your heart you have a dream to accomplish big things ndani ya moyo wako unayo ndoto ya kufanya kitu kikubwa i don't know what it is mimi sijui ni kitu gani but i have something to tell you lakini nina jambo la kukwambia the devil is after it shetani anakitafuta hicho he will battle you left and right atapigana vita na wewe kushoto na kulia sometimes you will experience attacks from nowhere wakati mwingine utapata mashambulizi kutoka sehemu yoyote ile the devil is after the destiny which god has given you shetani anatafuta kitu ambacho mungu amekupa i want you to learn one thing nataka ujifunze kitu kimoja Do not overshare your ideas. Usipende kushirikiana na watu wengine sana habari ya wazo lako. There are certain things God gives you, he wants you to learn to conceal these things in your heart. Kuna vitu ambavyo Mungu anakupa, anataka uvifiche ndani ya moyo wako. There are people with great business ideas. Kuna watu wana mawazo makubwa ya kibiashara. The problem is they tell everybody. They just tell and talk and talk to everybody about their ideas. Tatizo lao ni kwamba wanaanza kumwambia kila mtu kuhusu wazo lao before it is even birthed. Kabla hata hata halijazaliwa. So you meet people we call dream killers. Kwa hiyo unakutana na watu tunaoita wauandoto and they will slaughter your idea left and right na watachinja wazo lako kushoto na kulia oh do you know au unafikiri unajua oh somebody else had an idea like yours kuna mtu fulani alikuwa na wazo kama la kwako do you think he got anywhere unafikiri alifika mahali popote oh he flopped oh ali aliacha oh he flunked alipiga mbizi So be careful. Kwa hiyo uwe makini. When God put things in your heart. 
Wakati Mungu anapoweka vitu ndani ya moyo wako. It's like a pregnant woman. Ni kama mama mjamzito. We don't make pregnant woman run around. Hatumfanyi yule mama mjamzito akimbie kimbie. We don't give heavy work for pregnant women. Hatuwapi kanzi nzito wa mama wajawazito. Why? Kwa nini? Because they're delicate and they are vulnerable. Ni kwa sababu wana hali fulani ya utete na wako hatarini. They are ready to bring destiny on the planet earth. Wako tayari kuleta mustakabali fulani katika katika dunia hii. So we treat them with honor and we treat them carefully. Kwa hiyo tunawachukulia kwa namna ya heshima na umakini sana. And I want us to learn that. Na nataka tujifunze hilo. When God put things in your heart. Mungu anapoweka vitu ndani ya moyo wako. Learn to keep them for yourself. Jifunze kuvitunza kwa ajili yako wewe mwenyewe. And then when time comes, na sasa wakati utakapofika, you will be revealed to the world. Wewe utatambulishwa kwa ulimwengu. And when you are revealed to the world, na utakapofunuliwa katika ulimwengu, you already have enough muscles to withstand Uta, the, the fight of the devil. Na utakuwa na nguvu za kutosha za, ku, za kupigana na adui shetani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people are dreamers here? Ni wangapi wa watandoto hapa? How many people are vision bearers here? Ni wangapi wabeba maono hapa? You need to know one thing. Unahitaji kujua kitu kimoja. The value of your dream is known by two people. Na thamani ya ndoto zako zinafahamikwa na watu wawili tu. The vision bearer, mbeba maono and your haters. Na wale wanaokuchukia two people watu know wawili the value of your vision watu wawili hao wanajua thamani ya uh, maono yako the enemy who hates you adui anayekuchukia and you who carry the vision na wewe unayebeba maono so learn to hold fast to what is right kwa hiyo jifunza kushikilia kilicho sahihi. And when God gives you a dream, na Mungu atakapokupa maono, learn to protect your dream. Hebu jifunze kulinda ndoto zako. Learn to conceal your dream. Jifunze kuficha na kufunika ndoto zako. There are so many teachings the motivation speakers are telling us out there. Kuna watu wengi huko ambao wanapenda kuhamasisha watu. And sometimes they teach things that are not helpful. Na wakati mwingine wanafundisha vitu ambavyo havisaidi. There was a king in the Bible. Kulikuwa hapo na mfalme katika Biblia. Hezekiah. Anaitwa Hezekiah. God blessed him. Mungu alimbariki. And then he recovered. Na akapona. And he had a big army. Na akawa na jeshi kubwa. And God trusted him with a lot of battle secrets and battle strategies na mungu akambariki na kumwamini kwa mbinu nyingi za kivita but hezekiah lakini hezekiah was a big talker alikuwa ni muongeaji sana he liked to boast himself alipenda kujivuna mwenyewe so the people from Assyria came to him. Kwao watu kutoka Assyria wakamfuata. And Hezekiah, na Hezekiah, knowing that these are the enemies, akijua kwamba hawa ni maadui, he took them by the hand, akawachukua kwa mkono wake. He took them to the temple of God, akawapeleka katika hekalu la Mungu. Showed them everything, akawaonyesha kila kitu. And then he took them to the army, na akawapeleka katika jeshi, and he showed them all the chariots he had, na akawaonyesha magari ya vita yote and everything that god has given him na kila kitu ambacho mungu amempa when the assyrians went na wale wasiri wasiri walipoondoka he met the prophet of god akakutana na nabii wa mungu and the prophet of god said this na yule nabii wa mungu akasema hivi everything you have shown to the enemy vitu vyote ulivyoonyesha maadui zako they are going to beat you they are going to defeat you and they're going to take everything from you watakupiga na watakushinda na watachukua kila kitu kutoka kwako and when i was reading there na nilipokuwa nasoma pale that's when i realized ndipo nilipo gundua there are things that are so precious 
in the eyes of God. Kuna vitu ambavyo ni vya thamani sana katika macho ya Mungu. And God has entrusted them to your heart. Na Mungu ameviweka ndani ya moyo wako. These are not things to share with everybody. Hivi sio vitu vya kushirikiana na kila mtu. They are specific people in your life you need to learn to share important things kuna watu maalum katika maisha yao ambao unatakiwa ujifunze na kuongea nao kuhusu mambo yako otherwise vinginevyo you will share with the enemy utashiri utamshirikisha adui and the enemy will know the destiny which is coming na adui atajua mstakabari unaokuja so he will know exactly how to defeat you. Kwa hiyo atajua namna ya kukushinda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God help us. Mungu atusaidie. May God help us. Mungu atusaidie. The most vulnerable things in our lives. Ah, vitu ambavyo ni vya hatari sana katika maisha yetu. We have to learn to protect them. Tunatakiwa tujifunze namna ya kuvilinda, to shield them na kuvipa kuvizingira na ulinzi and also to incubate them lakini pia kuviatamia hallelujah hallelujah the conclusion of this babyhood is very simple na hitimisho ya hii hatua ya kuwa mtoto mchanga ni rahisi sana babyhood is the most exciting stage in our spiritual development utoto uchanga ni hatua ya kusisimua sana katika ukuaji wetu wa kiroho but it is also the most vulnerable time in our spiritual life lakini pia ni wakati ambao ni wa hatari sana katika maisha yetu ya kiroho Let us stand and I want to make two types of prayers hebu tusimame na nataka nifanye aina mbili za maombi Let us stand on our feet. Tusimame kwa miguu yetu. Let us stretch ourselves. Tujinyoshe. And I feel so strongly to pray for two things. Najisikia kwa nguvu sana kuombea mambo mawili. The enemy will do anything in his power to abort or to prevent birth into destiny. Adui atajaribu kwa namna yoyote ile kuzuiwa kuzaliwa kwa mstakabali wa, wa, wa katika maisha anything in his power chochote kilicho katika uwezo wake when people are ready to be born in the kingdom of god watu wanapokuwa wako tayari kuzaliwa katika uh, katika ufalme wa mungu when people are ready to be born again watu wanapokuwa tayari kuokoka you will see the devil will fight them left, left and right utaona shetani anapigana nao kushoto na kulia because he knows of their destiny in heaven kwa sababu anajua mstakabari wa maisha yao mbinguni salvation is new birth into the kingdom of god wokovu ni kuzaliwa upya katika ufalme wa mungu and the devil hates that na shetani anachukia sana hilo So I will pray with those people who want to be born into the kingdom of God. Kwa hiyo nitaomba na watu ambao wanataka kuzaliwa katika ufalme wa Mungu. The second type of people I feel like praying for. Aina ya pili ya watu ambao nataka nijisikie kuwaombea is those people who feel that they need to rekindle their love to God. Ni wale watu ambao wanajisikia kwamba wanatakiwa kuwasha upya upendo wao kwa Mungu. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4. Kitabu cha uh, ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa 4. Jesus is talking to the church of Ephesus. Yesu anaongea na kanisa la Efeso. And he's saying, but I have this one thing against you. Na anasema ya kwamba lakini nina jambo moja kinyume na wewe. You have forsaken the first love umeacha upendo wa kwanza remember where you have fallen kumbuka mahali ulipoanguka go repent nenda ukatubu and then come to me na ndipo sasa uje kwangu and do the first works 
na ukafanye sasa zile kazi za kwanza you might be here inawezekana uko hapa and you say to yourself na unasema when i became a christian nilipokuwa mkristo when i became born again nilipokuwa nimeokoka i was so excited about god nilikuwa nimesimuka sana kuhusu Mungu i used to tell people about jesus nilikuwa nawaambia watu habari za Yesu i used to pray all night long nilikuwa naomba usiku mzima i used to fall in love with the bible nilikuwa na upendo sana na, na biblia and i was full of the love of god in my heart na nilikuwa nimejaa upendo wa Mungu ndani ya moyo wangu and every sunday morning na kila siku ya jumapili asubuhi i was looking for forward to go and worship God. Nilikuwa natamani kwenda kumwabudu Mungu. But these days, lakini siku hizi, I struggle a lot. Ninaangaika sana. I have to fight to wake up from the bed. Ni lazima nipigane kuondoka kitandani. I have to fight to tell somebody about Jesus. Lazima nifanye kazi ya ziada kumwambia mtu habari za Yesu. I have to fight to read the word of God. Ni lazima nipigane kusoma neno la Mungu. Oh, I have to fight to pray. Labda lazima nipigane ili niombe. I'm not excited about God anymore. Sina ule msisimko tena kuhusu Mungu. I just want to die and go to heaven. Nataka tu nife na niende mbinguni. I'm so tired to be here on the planet Earth. Nimechoka sana kuwepo katika hii sayari ya dunia. Come quickly oh Jesus. Yesu Kristo njoo haraka. Maranatha, come quickly oh Jesus. Maranatha, njoo haraka Yesu. Because if you delay, kwa sababu ukichelewa, you might lose me. Inawezekana ukanipoteza. If you hear and that is what you feel in your heart. Kama uko hapa na hivyo ndivyo unavyojisikia ndani ya moyo wako. Today we are going to pray. Leo tunaenda kuomba that God will rekindle us in our hearts. Kwamba Mungu atatuwasha tena ndani ya moyo wetu. He will give us that new love. Atatupa tena yale maisha mapya. The new love that we loved him with. Ule upendo wa kwanza ambao tulimpenda. And the last type of people I'm going to pray for. Na aina ya mwisho ya watu ambao naenda kuombea. Is you carry the vision and the destiny in your heart. Kwamba umebeba maono na mustakabali ndani ya moyo wako. You feel that God has given you a big vision. Unajisikia kwamba Mungu amekupa maono makubwa. God has given you something which is bigger than yourself. Mungu amekupa kitu ambacho ni kikubwa kuliko wewe mwenyewe. I'm not talking about small little things. Mimi siongelei vitu vidogo vidogo. I'm talking about things that are going to touch so many lives. Naongelea vitu ambavyo vitaenda kugusa maisha ya watu wengi. And I believe God has put something in your heart. Na ninaamini Mungu ameweka kitu ndani ya moyo wako. But the enemy is attacking that thing in your heart. Lakini adui anashambulia hicho kitu ndani ya moyo wako and you are saying pastor i need to pray for the pregnancy that i have na unasema mchungaji nahitaji maombi kwa ajili ya mimba nilionayo because i am attacked everywhere kwa sababu ninashambuliwa kila mahali because the devil knows what i'm carrying kwa sababu shetani anajua nilichokibeba and when i give birth to what i have na nikizaa nilichokibeba the whole world is going to be delivered ulimwengu mzima utaenda kukombolewa i don't know if it is business mimi sijui kama ni biashara or it is ministry au ni huduma or it is whatever god has put in your heart au ni kitu chochote ambacho mungu ameweka ndani ya moyo wako but it's bigger than your family lakini ni kikubwa kuliko familia yako it's bigger than you ni kikubwa kuliko wewe i want to pray for these three types of people nataka niombe juu ya aina hizi tatu za watu so if you are here kwa hiyo kama uko hapa and you say i want Jesus in my heart. Na unasema namtaka Yesu ndani ya moyo wangu. I have never been saved. Sijawahi kuokoka. Oh, I was saved and I backslid. Au niliokoka lakini nikarudi nyuma. And today I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Na leo nataka nitoe upya maisha yangu kwa Yesu. 
I want to invite you to come front. When praise and worship team will be singing a song of worship. I want you to come and we are going to pray together. It will be our honor to usher you into the kingdom of God. This is your day. God wants to introduce you into the kingdom of God. This is the greatest day ever. This is the day that the Lord has made. And the decision which you have made today, they are going to take you into the presence of God. Your name is going to be taken out of the book of judgment. And your name is going to be written in the book of life. God is going to be your father as from today. And there will be no enmity between you and God. God is going to be your friend. This day is a great day. And never forget this day. Please follow us in this prayer. Tafadhali naomba ufuatishe maombi haya. Sema Bwana Yesu. Kwa sauti tafadhali sema kutoka moyoni mwako sema Bwana Yesu. Nimesikia neno lako. Kwa habari ya kuzaliwa katika ulimwengu wa roho. Na mchana wa leo ninakubali kuzaliwa katika ulimwengu wa roho ninaomba Yesu unisamee dhambi zangu zote nilizowahi kutenda ninazozikumbuka na nisizozikumbuka okoa moyo wangu na kuanzia leo naomba uwe bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yangu Unishike mkono na utembee pamoja nami na unipe ushindi juu ya dhambi na mambo ya dunia ingia ndani ya moyo wangu nimekukubali sasa katika jina la Yesu naomba na kushukuru amen 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 I will want you to follow our, our brother Obado on that side. Nataka mumfuate mchungaji Obado upande ule. And he will introduce you to something very quickly and then he will come back. Atawatambulisha kitu kimoja haraka alafu mtarudi hapa. It is about the decision that you have made today. Ni kuhusu maamuzi mliyofanya leo. Don't worry about your purse, don't worry about your baby. They are going to be safe. Usijali kuhusu vitu vyako Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we are still in the presence of God. I want those who say I want to rekindle, I want God to rekindle my love. Nataka wale ambao wanasema Mungu nataka niwashe tena upendo upya. You will come forward and you will stand on my left hand side. Utakuja hapa mbele na utasimama upande wangu wa kushoto. You are saying God rekindle my love. Unasema Mungu naomba ni uzaliwe tena upendo ndani yangu. And those who are saying God I feel like you have put a vision in me. Na wale wanaosema kwamba Mungu najisikia kwamba umeweka maono ndani yangu. Oh you will stand on my right hand side. Hao watasimama upande wangu wa kulia. So those who want God to rekindle their love. Kwa hiyo kwa hiyo wale ambao wanahitaji Mungu awasaidie kuwasha tena upendo kwa ajili yake you will stand on my left hand side mtasimama upande wangu wa kushoto and then those who say i carry a vision i carry 
a big burden. Na wale wanaosema nimebeba maono, nina mzigo mkubwa. I have destiny in my heart. Nina mstakabari ndani ya moyo wangu. And you say that God, I want you to help me to give birth to the big vision you have given me. Na unasema Mungu, naomba unisaidie niweze kuzaa maono haya makubwa uliyoweka ndani yangu. You will stand on my right hand. Nitasimama upande wangu wa kulia. Yesu na kuitaji vivyo kila saa niwe zeshemokozi na I want you to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Nataka uwe makini kwa sauti ya Roho Mtakatifu. The Holy Spirit will put ideas in your heart. Roho Mtakatifu ataweka mawazo ndani ya moyo wako. The Holy Spirit will tell you who not to associate with. Roho Mtakatifu atakwambia mtu ambaye hutakiwi kushirikiana naye. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do and what not to do. Roho Mtakatifu atakwambia kitu cha kufanya na kitu takuta kufanya and i believe na ninaamini after here baada ya hapa and even during this prayer na hata wakati wa maombi haya something is going to happen in your heart kuna kitu kitaenda kutokea ndani ya moyo wako you're not going to remain the same utabaki vile ulivyo because god is going to shake the very foundation of your heart kwa sababu mungu ataenda kutikisa msingi kabisa wa moyo wako father in the name of jesus baba katika jina la yesu thank you for your presence Asante kwa uwepo wako. Thank you for your power. Asante kwa nguvu zako. Thank you God for your hand. Asante Bwana kwa mkono wako. I pray now. Na naomba sasa. You will touch your people. Uaguse watu wako. Revive us so oh father. Tuhuishe e Bwana. Bring oh God a personal revival. Tulete Bwana uamsho binafsi. Father. Baba. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. Bring your spirit again. Let it work again. Breathe your heart, your spirit again. Ewa pulizia tena moyo wako na roho wako. Make us new again. Tufanye upya tena. Father. Baba. I thank you. Ninakushukuru because you are changing us. Kwa sababu unatubadilisha. You are transforming us. Unatubadilisha. You are making us need to pray. Na nataka kuomba. You who is faithful. Wewe ambaye ni mwaminifu. You have started a good work in them. Umeanza kazi njema ndani yao. You are going to perfect it. Unaenda kuikamilisha. And you are going to finish it. Na unaenda kuimalizia. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. I want to pray. Ninaomba for all powers of evil. Ngo kwa nguvu zote za uovu. I break them. Ninazivunja. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. We pray against destiny breaking powers tunakuja kinyume na zile nguvu zinazoharibu mustakabari in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu every vision that is born ama ona yote ambayo yamezaliwa father i pray baba ninaomba they are going to come to fruition yatakuja kukamilika in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu i pray for the protection of their dreams ninaomba kwa ajili ya ulinzi wa ndoto zao i pray for the protection of their vision ninaomba kwa ajili ya ulinzi wa maono yao i pray for the protection of their ideas
ideas you have put in their hearts nina omba ulinzi wa mawazo uliyoweka ndani ya mioyo yao the enemy will not have opportunity to steal that from them na adui hatakuwa na fursa ya kuiba kutoka kwao the enemy will not steal that seed in Jesus name adui hataiba hiyo mbegu kwa jina la Yesu and i pray for the power of the holy spirit na ninaomba kwa ajili ya nguvu za roho mtakatifu to hover over his people kuwafundika hawa watu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu in the mighty name of jesus kwa jina la yeweza la yesu hallelujah 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 Kitu kimoja zaidi nataka ujue. God has answered your prayer. Mungu amejibu maombi yako. You need to start making baby steps now. Unahitaji sasa kwenda kufanya hatua kubwa. Baby steps. Hatua za mtoto mchanga. Any vision that God gives you. Maono yoyote ambayo Mungu amekupa. You need to work on that vision. Unahitaji kufanyia kazi hayo maono. You cannot keep the vision in your heart forever. Huwezi kutunza maono yako ndani ya moyo milele. And you don't make steps to make it to come to pass. Na oh, kama ufanyi uchukue hatua ili yaweze kufanyika. You and God are partners. Wewe na Mungu ni wabia. God gives you the vision. Mungu anakupa maono. You make the first step. Wewe unatakiwa uchukue hatua ya kwanza. God will make the second step. Na Mungu atafanya hatua ya pili. You take the third step. Unachukua hatua ya tatu. God will make the fourth step. Na Mungu atafanya hatua ya nne. That is how we walk with God. Hivyo ndivyo tunavyotembea na Mungu. I can see big things happening in your life. Naona mambo makubwa yakitokea katika maisha yako. Take courage and take boldness. Hebu uchukua ujasiri na ukawe jasiri. Don't be afraid. Usiwe na hofu. Don't be afraid. Usiwe na hofu. Go for the sun or the stars. Hebu nenda ukafikie nyota. Go so high and aim so high with God. Hebu nenda juu sana na ukanuie mambo makubwa pamoja na Mungu. Don't be afraid of the dream God has put in your heart. Usiwe na hofu ya uh, ndoto ambazo Mungu ameweka ndani ya moyo wako. He has put that in your heart because he knows with him you are going to do it. Ah, uh, ameweka hiyo katika moyo wako kwa sababu pamoja na yeye mtafanya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. Usi ogope. Don't listen to people who discourage you. Usiwasikilize watu wanaokukatisha tamaa. If somebody tells you you cannot do it. Kama kuna mtu atakwambia huwezi kufanya hiyo. Tell them you are right. Tell them you are right. Waambie kwamba uko sahihi because not me who is going to do it. Kwa sababu sio mimi tu naenda kufanya. But God is going to do it. Lakini Mungu anaenda kufanya. Hallelujah. 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 Let us go sit and God is going to visit you in a special